All right. Um, hi guys. Good afternoon. Um, hopefully you're able to see me, hear me, and also see the screen. And yes, so uh, from today's session, like we have discussed earlier, also, uh, we are now moving into the revision zone. So we'll be revising all the concepts um, that we have already discussed, right? And again, uh, everything that we have seen so far has been updated in the repository. I think the session link is missing. I will upload that as well uh, after this one. But other than that, um, everything is updated over there, right? So you can go and check the repository um, for access to the code and all of those things, right? So you can find it. Um, I've also uploaded those video references that I have shown you earlier. So please make sure you visit those as well. So there is one React project, one Express project, and one MongoDB project. Three video references are uh, provided for now. And I am also creating a video on deployment. So I will add that by tomorrow as well. I'm trying to create it uh, today. So that video will show you how do you deploy a React application which is what you have to deploy for the project, right? So um, you can basically refer to that and you know go ahead and deploy as well uh, because that will be required when you submit um, the project, right? Now, like we've discussed, the uh, setup of these sessions is going to be such that we will have a revision for the first um, still 7, 10, 7, 15, and then the last 15, 20 minutes uh, will be for project doubts, right? The reason why I am keeping the doubts at the end is because if we take doubts in the beginning, then we might not get enough time to revise. So since you will also be start, uh, you know, you'll also start working on the projects um, hopefully soon, or maybe you have already started. The idea is we'll start the revision from the very first topic that we have discussed, right? And this will be quick, okay? This will be actually pretty quick. Um, we will not spend a lot of time talking about the theoretical concepts, um, the stories behind different things. That is something we've already seen. You can watch the recordings for those if you want to. But our focus in the revision is going to majorly be uh, the main coding part, the practical part of everything, right? So today we'll start off with the first few things that we've discussed uh, and then we'll discuss HTML primarily. That is the agenda for the day. And then uh, I'll try to give you a challenge or we'll try to build something together, right? So I'll give you 10, 15 minutes before the doubts, uh, you know, 15, 20 minutes before the doubts where I leave you with a challenge. So I'll show you something on the screen and I would want you to try to make that or try to create it with the HTML or with whatever we discuss that particular day, right? Uh, yes, so Sai Deepak from the YouTube live chat. Yes, you can use Tailwind CSS, no problem. Uh, first of all, again, it is Tailwind CSS, not Tailword CSS. I am not aware of something called Tailword. Uh, as far as I know, it is Tailwind uh, CSS. So yes, you can use it, no problem. Uh, as long as you are creating it using React and Express and MongoDB, the languages that you use for front end will not really matter, right? So you have to use HTML, CSS, and JavaScript uh, anyway. So for CSS, if you want to use some other format like Tailwind, you can use that. I recommend Bootstrap because that is what we have discussed and that is also um, you know, what we will discuss. So Bootstrap is something that I recommend you use. But again, if you want to use Tailwind, uh, please feel free to. Now, the next thing that we uh, actually started off with, so let me quickly, you know, go back to the very first session uh, that we started off with. And this was, you know, um, very, uh, very simple. So we started discussing about website. And again, we have seen that website is basically information on the internet. And a good website uh, typically is information about a specific um, thing, right? So let's say information about sports or information about um, you know, let's say um, coding information about uh, design, for example. So as a good website typically contains information about a specific thing or related domains, right? Then uh, we have taken a look at different terms. So web development and web design, we discussed the difference between the two, right? Uh, web design is where we create the visual aspects or the UI elements, uh, which is a UI UX part of it. Uh, which is what we call wireframes 
and then web development is where we actually go ahead and we code that design. So step one is to create the wireframes and then step two is to create the code or write the code, right? So again, these are two different job roles or two different job responsibilities. Uh, the first one web designer is somebody who is a graphic artist and they are responsible for designing the layout, the usability, the visual appearance, uh, all of that against or as compared to a web developer who is somebody who is responsible for converting the design into functional code or functional website, right? So whatever design we receive from a designer, that will be an input, right? And we then go ahead and create a website. So for today's challenge, what I am going to give you is something like this. So this is a friend's design. Uh, it's his portfolio website. As you can see, it looks pretty nice. So this section is what, you know, we are trying to focus on today uh, in terms of implementation in HTML, right? Uh, I actually wanted to do the entire landing page, but I don't think we will have enough time to implement that. So yes, we'll either, I think this one is a better option. So we can take this section and we'll try to implement it. So this is what the UI UX uh, looks like, right? The colors to use, the fonts to use, all of that stuff. That is the UI UX. And then of course, you know, we go ahead and we try to write the actual code. Okay, which is the development aspect. So that's web development, right? Uh, then that brings us to the next part. So that is front end versus back end. Right? So again, in front end development, uh, we have uh, everything that is visible to the user. So all the UI aspects, the UI elements uh, that will make up the front end of the website, right? So again, if you consider a kitchen analogy or a restaurant analogy, then everything that we see on the table where we are seating all of that area that is the front end of the restaurant and then we will have something called the back end which is where all the ingredients will be stored so that can be considered as data storage um, that is where all the food will be cooked so kitchen cooking area and ingredient storage room all of that will make the back end and the database of the setup so in a similar way for a website also Front end is everything that is visible to the user or to be more precise, front end is something that the users can interact with, right? Front end is something that the users can interact with. Uh, and then back end is something which is typically hidden from the user, which is where we have all the logic and the functionality, right? So again, that's what front end and back end mean. Then we move to the next term that is stack, right? So uh, a full stack or a stack basically refers to a collection of technologies, uh, a combination of which is used to create the actual application or create the entire web application, right? So in our case, uh, the full stack here basically, you know, refers to the MON stack. That's M-E-R-N that we have discussed. So MON stands for, so M in MON stands for MongoDB, which is the database. Then E stands for Express, which is our backend server. Then R is React JS, which is our front end uh, toolkit or front end. Um, you know, we create the front end application with React, and then N stands for Node, right? Which is going to be our um, again the runtime which powers uh, both React and Express. So Node is a runtime engine which powers both React applications for front end as well as Express applications for the back end. So this is what we have in terms of the Mon stack, right? So that's the Mon stack. Again, we have already covered these technologies and we'll be going through them once again uh, as a part of this revision. Then the next part that we looked at or that is important to understand is that there are different components of a website and no matter which website we pick, right, every website follows this pattern to a certain extent. The very first component, for example, is header. So again, these are some screenshots of headers and a header, right, is typically um, a header is typically the first section. We also call it the hero section in some cases, but a header typically is the first section on the website, which basically tells us everything about what the website is for. And you can very clearly identify from these four examples what these websites are for. So we can understand the first one is a course website. The second one is for some services. The third one is um, uh, selling products. And the fourth one is some other, uh, you know, different teaching related thing, right? So this is what, you know, we have in terms of the setup. Okay. So that's what we have in terms of header. 
then next up we have footer right so this is what the footer looks like now the footer can be very simple something as simple as the one that you see at the bottom or something as complicated as the first one that you see uh, over here right so depending on the uh, setup the footer can actually be very complex or very simple finally we have something called the main content which is everything between the header and the footer so the first thing on the page is the header the last thing on the page is the footer and everything between them all the other sections on the page uh, they make up the main content of the website so you can see here this is what the main content looks like again just an example of those that then brings us to the next um, part which is understanding the flow of how we create a website so we typically call it i typically call it the journey of a website these are some standard steps that we follow for developing any software application uh, for that matter so it could be a web app it could be a mobile app it could be a normal uh, you know a normal system windows application as well um, so the first step in that process is called requirements engineering so this is where we obviously figure out what needs to be on the application what is the requirement right what is needed or required in the application that's the first step once we figure out all the requirements we then go ahead and perform what is called requirements analysis where we figure out okay how important is a particular requirement how priority uh, how much priority should we give uh, to that requirement then the third thing is uh, how much time will it take how much will it cost us all of those things and then we move to the second step so that is wire framing right so in the second step what we do is based on that requirement we go ahead and create a visual design something that i showed you in the beginning right if you remember the figma wireframe that i showed you in the beginning so that is what we uh, call a wireframe so again if you see this one here this is an example of a wireframe right so this is a wireframe you can see it looks pretty nice and this is the design aspects or the design part of the um, application or the process. So this is where we create the wireframe. We typically split this into two steps. We call it step one and uh, so we call it lo-fi and hi-fi. Uh, lo-fi designs are where we don't put the colors and, you know, um, you know, we don't put the actual colors and fonts. Um, and then the hi-fi is where we actually, you know, um, go ahead and uh, add the actual colors, content, material, everything that we need, right? So that's what we have in the second step, okay? Uh, so again, for people who are, I don't know, wondering or putting things in the chat, uh, from today onwards, like I already discussed in the previous session, we have started with our revision sessions, right? So one round of um, all the topics has already been covered. And from today onwards, we have begun the revision. So we'll be going through all the topics that we have discussed already, but uh, in much faster pace, at a much faster pace, primarily covering uh, on the practical side. Okay, so that um, you know, so that we are able to uh, quickly discuss all the topics, uh, and you can also parallelly then you know start working on the projects using these topics as well. So that's the idea. Okay, now the once the wireframe is done, we then move to the third step right the third step is development this is where we actually implement everything and this is where we spend most of our time right so as developers this is what our job role is uh, we use all sorts of languages html css javascript react express node mongodb all those things uh, you know to actually create the application now for front end like we have seen we only have html css javascript primarily because of the fact that the browser only understands these languages, right? So since the browser does not understand anything else, uh, the front end has to be written in HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. There is no other alternative that we have, right? Uh, but on the other hand, on the contrary, when it comes to the back end, then things are very different because in the case of back end, right, what happens is, um, right, um, we usually um, end up with a lot of choices. So when we talk about backend, right, we have PHP, we have Python, we have Java, we have uh, Ruby, we have so many other languages like Golang and, you know, Kotlin and all of these languages, which can also be used typically for um, the backend creation. So in our case, we are using JavaScript for both frontend and backend because JavaScript is really um, flexible enough 
and it is really powerful enough to support both front end development as well as back end development so that way we don't have to learn a new thing uh, we don't have to learn a new language altogether we can use the same javascript knowledge in both front end as well as back end another thing to note is that the frameworks that are available for front end and back end are also a lot for example we have react for front end that we are discussing but in addition to react we also have something called angular js something called vue js ionic js uh, there are so many other options as well right and again they are mostly javascript based at least for the front end because javascript is the go to programming language for the front end right so these frameworks are available we are discussing react which is one out of those options then uh, for the back end again we have a lot of options which typically depend on the programming language so if we consider javascript we have express uh, node js these are javascript based frameworks if you go for python so we have something called flask we have something called django these are python based frameworks uh, if you go for php then you have something called laravel which is a php based framework right then you have something called spring spring boot that's java based backend frameworks so depending on the programming language that we pick for the backend we can accordingly decide on the framework for the same okay so again that's the development step uh, as far as this photo here, as you can see, probably HTML and CSS, right, uh, is just that, um, you know, what languages do you use? Uh, if, the, if you look at the this meme here, it says HTML and CSS. And, you know, technically speaking or other theoretically speaking, um, HTML and CSS are not considered programming languages. Uh, because they are something, they are called markup languages. They are not programming languages in the sense that we are not writing any logic, um, you know, for in HTML or CSS. We can't really write any logic in HTML. So you are not writing a program as such. All you're doing in HTML and CSS is just instructing the browser how to display something. Like this is a heading, this is a bold, this is red, this is yellow, this is underlined, this is uh, italics stuff like that right so that is why uh, you know uh, what we typically say is that html and css are <coughs> markup languages we use the term markup and we don't use the term programming languages so technically speaking they are not programming languages but again it doesn't really matter they are used for development so we might as well consider them you know the same right so that's what html and css are then uh, the next step after development is where we test the application and again you can see the uh, again image here the most uh, important or the most challenging part for web development testing is screen sizes right so we can open a website on something as simple as a smartwatch uh, all the way to a big 100 inch tv right so everything is possible uh, you have a very broad range of devices. It's not like a mobile application curated for a mobile phone or designed specifically for a device, right? So that's the biggest challenge both in development as well as testing. But yes, so we typically consider three to four different sizes while testing the website and also while developing. We have also discussed that. That is called responsiveness. Finally, after we uh, you know, uh, uh, after we are done with testing the website, the next step is to deploy. So deployment basically means taking something and putting it online or making it available on the internet so that everybody or the intended users can get access to that website or the web application. We have already seen this deployment with Netlify. Um, I will also, like I said, I'll be adding a video on this in the reference as well uh, on the repository. I, in the repository, I will add another reference video for deployment as well. So that when you're deploying, you can focus, you can follow that video and get it deployed right once the deployment is done the final step is called maintenance and maintenance is where we sort of take care of the website this is where we figure out that okay um, you know now that the website is live we try to identify issues on the website we try to add new features to it we try to make changes or modifications to existing features etc etc so that's the maintenance part of it because typically you know when we start working on the uh, on a website it is never really complete there is always something that is missing 
uh, something that could have been better some new sale comes up some new offer comes up a new product is being announced the team changes so there are always changes that are required on a website so uh, i typically say that as long as a company is in business as long as a company is in business they keep uh, updating their website so that's the setup that process is called maintenance so in maintenance after we decide that okay now that this new feature needs to be added we go all the way back to step 1 and we redo the entire process for that new feature so we come to maintenance and then we repeat the cycle every time a new set of features are added okay or needed are needed or required to be added on the website so this is the entire development process that we have seen okay then we have also looked at all the tools that we need so we need vs code we need um, chrome node js mongodb git and github we have explored the first four tools very well a uh, git and github we will spend a, a little more time on them during the revision sessions so when we write the revision session code um, you know when we start implementing uh, code in the revision sessions i will tell you how to implement a git repository how to uh, commit changes how to share it with people i will do all of that in the next couple of sessions as well right? but again i have already shown you the github part of it but still um, the command line com the commands that we have in the cli the command line interface we'll discuss those as well how to create a new branch how to manage all of those things we'll talk more about that in the revision sessions right done now the first language that we cover you call it a programming language you call it a markup language whatever it is it is a language at the end of the day the first language that we uh, will discuss is html5 as a part of a revision and again html stands for hypertext markup language it basically indicates how html works and the way html works is very simple html has something called tag and along with the tag we have something called an attribute right so tag attribute combinations uh, is what we have and that is how the whole setup is right very simple and again we have seen all these different types of tags in html so i'm going to quickly uh, you know walk you through some of these tags in in 5 minutes um, so that we do cover everything as intended and it does not become a session where we are not actually writing any code so the very first thing is the file name must be index.html i already have a folder open in vs code i have another extension installed which is live server uh, you can also add it if you want to so this will automatically refresh the browser right uh, every time we make a change to the html code again uh, in the references you will also find a video wherein i have shown you seven vs code extensions that are really handy okay so you can check that out as well so they are basically seven different extensions and some extensions you know um, do stuff like this so they make comments highlighted like so uh, so if you put different you know different special characters the comment get highlighted then there are some other extensions uh, which highlight other parts of the code you can see this is orange in color a normal comment is green right but if i say fix me for example so this is a keyword um to do is a keyword right and so there are so many different keywords available and some special characters also so this is for example a special character these are coming from some other extensions so i think this one um, is called better comments right you can see here so yes uh, you can see some of these examples exclamation is red question mark is uh blue to do is orange uh, star is green uh, etc and there is one more extension for these which i think was yes to do highlight so here we can have certain uh, keywords like for example fix um, fix me to do like this and they also get highlighted so these are just some additional tools that i use on a daily basis so for example i can say to do and you can see it gets highlighted then i can say fix me and this gets highlighted so i can note right in whichever piece of code i think a fix is needed or in whichever you know piece of code we have to um, figure out that this needs to be added we can use these shortcuts uh, for people who are asking the topic of the session again as always the topic is right here at the top in vs code it's a standard place i keep it here every day so yes this is your topic name for the day um, please refer to it from there yes now 
coming to the tax in tax so the first category of tax that we have in html like we have seen our heading tags right? these are heading tags again they range from h1 to h6 uh, let me know in the chat which of these is the biggest heading right so uh, until i quickly type this out uh, let me know in the chat which of this is the biggest heading is h1 the biggest or is h6 the biggest because as far as the number goes right um, six should be a bigger heading but let me know in the chat which one do you think is a is the biggest of all perfect h1 is the biggest heading that we have available then we have the paragraph tag so this is a p tag right we have already seen these things i'm just quickly re revising them for you we will not spend a lot of time on this this is the paragraph then we have lists uh, in html Right, and then in list we have two types of lists. So we have OL. OL can then contain a list item. This can then in turn contain any other HTML element, right, or any other HTML uh, tag. So we can, for example, three items like so: one, two, and three. And similarly, we have something called unordered list that is UL. So UL is basically a um, bulleted list, right? So that's what we have in terms of lists in HTML. And then we move to the other things which are links in HTML. So again, we'll take a look at that in just a minute. Now, how do we start this with a live server? Well, we go to our code file, right click and open with live server. So this should open it up in the browser as you can see here, right? And these are all the different tags. So six headings, H1 being the biggest, H6 being the smallest, then a paragraph and a couple of links. And the first items belong to an ordered list because it's numbered. The second set of items belong to an unordered list because it is bulleted out and there is no number, right? So this is what we have in terms of lists. Okay, so we've discussed headings, paragraphs, lists. Then we have some formatting tags available in HTML. These are used to bold, italicize or underline things. Uh, we typically do them with CSS, but they are tags that are available in HTML as well. So B is for bold, right? Then we have I for italics. These are standard HTML tags, okay? And then we have U for underline. Uh, we typically don't use them as much. So if I just go back to the output and refresh, uh, it should already be refreshed. Let's just see. Yes, you can see. So we have, uh, this is underline. You can see this is italics and this is bold. Okay, so we have underline, italics and bold. These are some tags that we have seen, okay? Finally, what we also do is instead of Okay, it says it's not possible without a head or body. Fair enough. Uh, instead of italics, we use the em tag because that is better uh, in terms of what we call uh, semantic markup. Right? So it basically says that the code that you're writing should make some sense. It should be meaningful, uh, semantic. Right. So that basically indicates that the code that we write must be meaningful. And again, you can see it does the same role. Uh, it is italics also and it is bolded also so again the u means the same there is no special tag for underline right so this is what we have in terms of formatting tags that are available in html then we have comments that we have already seen so these are examples of comments in html and then finally we have the hr and br so hr is horizontal rule right so let me write that in horizontal rule uh, which basically is a line going from one end of the page to the other end of the page. So if I just refresh now, you can see this line which goes after the head, under the heading from the left to the right of the screen, that is the HR. Okay. And then similarly, we have the BR tag. So wherever we need to take the content to the next line, uh, you know, in the case of a paragraph or in any other text for that matter, we can use the BR tag and that will help us uh, move things around. So this basically uh, it mimics or, or imitates a space, uh, sorry, an enter key on our keyboard, right? So that's the BR tag. We call it the line break, okay? The line break tag. So these are all the diff uh, all the different text related tags that we have available in HTML, okay? Now what I will do is I will just quickly split this up on the screen and I'll let this be here for about uh, two minutes. Right, just so that you can quickly, uh, you know, just go through them once, just understand them really quickly, and then we'll move to the next part. Okay, so you can see this on the screen. I have uh, put everything down. Let me set this to word wrap here. 
so that you can actually see all the tags. So I think we have everything up to paragraphs on the left hand side and then all the list related things on the right hand side. So I'll just leave this on the screen for two minutes. You can quickly just go through them. And if you have any questions regarding these, please put them in the chat. And then in two minutes, let's move to the next part. Okay, perfect. So now that uh, this is done, let's move to the next set of tags that we have available in HTML. So we've discussed the text tags already. Now the next bit that we have is a link, right? So these are very important. This is a very important tag. And like we've already, like, like I have told you, there are three different ways of linking or three different uh, type of links that we can have. The first is linking to an external website, right? So for an external website, uh, what we can do is we can have the a tag with the href attribute and then of course uh, we can specify the content so click here for example right or let's say go to google whatever it is over here right and then this link will contain https www.google.com so if we are linking to an external website right so let me just write write that in external website then we have to enter a complete URL. 
So all the way from the IP, which is all the way from HTTPS, specifying which um, protocol do we want to use. So HTTP is hypertext transfer protocol, right? So all the way from the internet protocol IP that we have to use, we have to specify the entire thing, right? So this will then connect to an external website, okay? If we don't use HTTPS, and if you only put www.google.com, then what it will try to do is it will try to find Google within your project. So notice what happens here. You can see it says localhost slash www.google.com. So it is actually trying to find Google within our uh, system or within our project, which obviously is not available. So in external links, it is really important to put HTTP or HTTPS, ideally HTTPS um, for this to work properly. Then the second type of link that we have is an internal link. So let us assume that we have another file called about.html. And here we just have h1 saying this is about page, um, for example. Right? Then we can connect to this page by specifying the relative folder path. So if it's in the same folder, we can specify it like this. And then about page. And now if we check, it should connect to about page. You can see this is about page. If it is nested in another folder, so let us say that there is another folder called pages and about is within that pages folder. Uh, then what we have to do is we have to specify the relative folder path, which means starting from index.html, where is the about file? We don't have to put all that C colon users files, none of that. We have to use relative path, which means starting from the current file, starting from index.html, where is that um, file, right? So, or where is that web page? So it is in a folder called pages slash and then about.html. This is where it is. So again, we don't have to put the entire folder path, just the relative folder path. Okay. So that is what, um, you know, we have in terms of uh, internal links. So let me just write that comment here. Internal page, right? Internal page which is a page within our project itself. Finally, we can have a third kind of link, which is within the same page, right? So let's scroll down, okay? Or scroll to lists, for example. So this is single page or within the page. Link, link within the page, right? And over here, what we have to do is, we have to specify the ID first. Where do we want it to connect? So let us say we want it to go here. Let's say link lists for example right? list section for example now we can specify this with a hash so hash list section this will tell the uh, link or tell the browser that we actually want to scroll down to the list section so if i just add a couple of dummy content paragraphs so that the page actually becomes scrollable just to show you how this works right so now the page is a uh, scrollable and I think we should um, add the link at the top to see this in effect. So let me actually cut it and move it at the top. So now if I click on this scroll to list, you can see it automatically scrolls down to the list section. Okay. So this is how you connect. You can also see in the URL, if I just show you this URL also, uh, this is what the URL looks like. Okay. Hash list section. So this means within the page, we are trying to access the list section. Okay. So that is the URL. Uh, that is how it looks like. So this, these are the three different types of links that we have available in HTML. Okay. Again, and we might need uh, one or all of these in the project. Uh, typically we need all of them in a single project. So it is not like only one of them is used at a given point of time. That brings us to the next part, which is media tags. So I'll not go through all of them again. Uh, I'll just show you images and embeds. Right? Audio and video, you can refer to it you know, from W3 schools if you want to. They are not tags that we typically use. Images we use a lot, of course. The tag for that is IMG. We have four important attributes, source, alt, height, and width. Um, these are the four typical attributes that we use. Again, height and width, we usually specify with CSS. So we don't directly specify them here, uh, but source and alt are important. So it is where the image is located. So again, here we have two possibilities. Either the image can come from the internet 
or it can be within our system. Let me show you both of those approaches. So let me first download an image to my system and then I'll also get one from the internet as well. So let me uh, just open up the session folder and let's add image demo. So I'm just calling it image demo. Okay. This is my downloaded image and I will also just take one from the internet as well. So let me pick um, this one, this one. So let's pick this one. For this, what we can do is we can right click and copy image address. Okay, so copy image address and simply paste in the source. That's it. Add the image. If we refresh, you can see image is now added to our um, website. And we can then control the height and width if we want. So like this, I think we can simply control the width to 500 pixels. And accordingly, automatically the height will be adjusted. So if I just set the width, you can see the height is automatically adjusted. We can also put a line break here. Um, because again, these are, um, they are not block level, but inline level elements. So this way it will go to the next line, as you can see, right? If you want to add an image from the system, then it's the same setup. So you have image and you can see these two tags uh, or attributes show by default. And then again, you have to specify the relative folder path. So if the image is inside another folder called images, if it is inside this one, Right. Then what you have to do is you have to specify the entire folder path. So images slash image demo. And again, we can then control the width through something like this. The height will automatically be adjusted. Okay, You can see now both the images show up next to each other on our page. This is how we can add images to our website. Right. Perfect. So before we proceed further, what I want you to do next is I want you to use everything that I have shown you just now which is all the text things, all the images part and the links. And I want you to create one section, just the HTML, no CSS uh, just yet, but the HTML part. Okay. I will show you the output on the screen and you can then, you know, um, go ahead and create it. And um, yes, this entire part. So everything that is visible to you right now, this entire thing, I want you to create the HTML for it, just the HTML. Okay. So I will leave this. Uh, I'll give you about 15 minutes for this. Uh, it might be too much, but I want you to try to use only the HTML that we have discussed so far. Right? You can also use other tags if you want to like div span, all of those, but ideally you should be able to create this using everything that we have just discussed. Okay, so you can go ahead and try this out. I'll give you a few minutes and then we'll come back and then I'll quickly show you the solution to this. And also I will take questions on the project. Okay, so let's come back in a few minutes and continue from there. Uh, in the meanwhile, do try this out. It's going to be very interesting for you because we will build the same CSS and then do the same thing in React. So this way, you know, you will also understand how things work in the real time setup as well. So give this one a try, try to create this output using HTML. I'll give you a few minutes. Let's come back and continue in some time.
okay yes um hi guys so we are back uh let's start by taking a look at how many of you were able to finish this output so um yes let me know in the chat if you were able to finish it off just put a yes done completed something in the chat so that i know you were able to attempt this and then uh, let's discuss this quickly and then we'll move to in taking questions around the projects if you might have any uh, okay i don't see anything in the chat but no worries uh so basically what we have to do here in this one let me just break it down for you uh, in terms of the tags that we've just covered today i will not go to the other tags for now but this is h1 right then this is a link uh, it can also be a button but it is a button inside a link so a tag then this is an image the company logo this is the this could be a p tag and um, then this is another h2 h3 something like that uh, this is going to be a p tag then this is going to be a p tag again right and then the same setup is repeated uh, four times okay so this is the basic breakdown of of the output that you had to create in this case, right? I am not going to implement this just yet. We will implement it with React. So when we get to the React part, we will definitely you know, implement this. But for now, uh, I just wanted you to attempt this using HTML. Um, I hope you did. I cannot make sure that you did, but I can hope uh, that you did, right? Perfect. Now, the last couple of quick things before we actually jump into taking the questions in the chat. So the, there is a tag for embedding, right, which is called the iframe. And we typically use it to embed YouTube videos, right? So in most uh, cases, right, we want to embed resources, additional content, stuff like that, right? So let us take any one video. Let's take this one for example, screen. right? So if you have to embed this, we can click on the share button. And then we can copy, uh, sorry, we can go to the first option, which is embed. Then we can copy the code from here. So this gives us an iframe tag, which we can just paste. See, this is an iframe tag. And this allows us to embed the YouTube video within our page. So if I refresh now, you can see the YouTube video is directly added. This setting, however, is on the video creator, right? So some uh, video creators allow embedding, uh, some don't. Um, so in case you reach a point or if you see that there is a problem here, it says video cannot be loaded, YouTube block access, something like that. That would basically mean that the creator of the video, whoever has uploaded it, they have not made it public. They have not enabled that setting uh, for embedding. So it's not your fault. It's not your code's fault. It is that the setting has been disabled because they did not want the video to be available on other platforms. So that's a, a choice that YouTube gives us, right? <clears throat> uh, coming back to our code. So this is what we have looked at, right? This is basically our media tags. Audio video, you can just refer to it, you know, on W3 schools or other places. Very simple. Then we have tables and forms. We'll discuss these uh, later on. So in the next session, we'll talk more about tables and forms. That then brings us to block and inline elements. So like we have already seen, if you just see the output, we can very easily distinguish the block elements from the inline ones. So everything up top, all the basic text elements are block up until this list. Then links on the other hand are in line. As you can see, both links show up in the same line. Similarly, both images show up in the same line and the video also shows up in the same line. Similarly, the audio tag, video tag, they are also inline elements. So block level elements occupy the entire block of the screen, uh, no matter how much amount of space they need. For example, this heading just requires this much space, but it still takes up the entire block. Right? There is, It does not let the paragraph come next to it over here. That block level. And inline elements only take up as much space as they need, which is this much. And the next uh, element can come, you know, adjacent to it or right next to it. Those are inline elements. So that's block and inline. When it comes to the code, we have two options, div and span. So div elements are actually used to group things together. That's the div. And span is used to individually select something. For example, if we have to 
combine all headings under a common uh, section or a common container, that would be a div, right? So in this case, uh, we have put a div and we can then give it a class or an ID to call it that it's heading div. Similarly, if I have to wrap this entire list part in one div, so I can just wrap it up like so, right? And this would then make it a, a div of lists, for example, right? And then in the wireframe, if you remember, uh, we can group these things into divs. So this can be a div, right? So this um, basically each individual experience can be a div. This can be a div. This can be a div. This can be a div. And the overall container, this can be a div. And then this entire thing can also be a div. So it can be a collection of divs, something like this, right? So that is the div tag. Okay. Then we have the span tag, which can be in which can be used to individualize or select something uh, individually. So let us say from this paragraph, we want this particular term to look different. Again, we can do the difference in CSS, not in HTML, but we can use span to individually select that piece of text and style it differently. Let us say, for example, that it's an offer tag. Uh, something is some offer is going on or we want to show a strike and, you know, a discounted price, something of that sort, which is special on the page. So we can use this span to individually choose that text or extract that text. And then we can style it to make it look different uh, than the rest of the text around it. That is span, right? Uh, we also use span in some other cases um, if we want to, but yes, that is our span tag. So we have divs and spans. Okay. So that's what we have, right? In terms of the setup right now. And uh, okay, let me, this is my bad. Yes, uh, let me go back to the code now. So yes, now the next thing that we have after this are uh, some additional tags that are available, which are just like the div, which looks like this. We call it the boilerplate, right? So this HTML5 boilerplate basically talks about everything HTML and this makes everything valid. Right? This makes everything valid. So technically speaking or theoretically speaking, everything that we have written so far is not actually valid HTML. To make it valid, what we have is first top type tag. Then we have the HTML, which contains head and then body. The head then contains the title of the page. And then within the body is where we paste all of our content. So this is how the um, setup is, right? And uh, I'm not sure why. Uh, okay, I'll probably reset it later. But the idea is, as you can you know, um, see here, is that we have a proper boilerplate in place where we have HTML, then head, title, and then body. And then the body will actually contain all the rest of the content. Right. So everything white, uh, everything that is visible in the white space in the browser that actually comes from the body or is actually within the body tag, right, in HTML. And what is the problem with this one? It's giving me some error, some error for pretty or not sure why. No worries. I think um, we can just ignore that for now. I'll just probably restart and it should be fine. But yes, uh, coming back to the point. So this is our setup, right? Um, and this is a proper HTML page. Okay. Very quickly, we can also discuss tables and forms uh, because we have some time. So uh, tables in HTML, very simple. We have the table tag. Okay. Then within the table, we typically write the caption first. So this is the title of the table, whatever it is, right? So, um, you know, Title of table. Then we have the T head. That's the head of the table. So T head. Okay. And then we have the T body, just like the page head and body. Then within this, we have the table header, which then contains the table row. And within which we can have individual. Okay. I think this is wrong. The table row comes first, then the table header. And within this, we can then type in the individual thing. For example, serial number. Let's say this is a banking um, thing. So we can have income. Um, let's say credit. There can be another column for debit. And there can be current balance, for example. So current 
balance, something like this. Then in the body, we can have another TR, which can contain all these TD tags, which will correspond to these four tags. So one serial number, let's say credit, let's say thousand rupees are credited, no debit, of course, because so it can only be one of the two. And then TH, uh, again, TD, the current balance could then be, let's say, 1,000 rupees, right? Then let's say we have one wherein it is debited. So this will be empty. This will be 500. And the total balance will then be 500. So we can you know, put things around like this. And finally, we have to put border equal to 1. This will give us the border. So if you go back to our output and refresh, you can now see we have a table. And it looks something like this. So this is the caption of the table. This is the header and this is the content. We do have some additional things like table, uh, row span, call span, all those things. Um, you can experiment with them on your own. But these are tables that are available in HTML, right? So we have taken a quick look at, um, you know, everything here. Okay. We have taken a look at pretty much everything HTML. This is everything that we have discussed in a lot of detail. So I really hope, you know, that you are able to understand these things and i really hope you are able to use these things in your project as well because now that you start working right on the project um, you will uh, also need right uh, you will also start uh, to use html and css so please make sure that you use all of these tags as and when you need them i will upload the code as well to the same repository i will call it revision session one so instead of session 25, I will call it revision session one and I will upload it uh, under that folder. Similarly, for the recording links also, I will put revision session and put the recording link um, over there. Okay. So yes, this is what we have in terms of uh, HTML recap revision for today. I hope this makes sense. Now, the next thing that I want uh, to do is to take questions on the project but I can only answer those questions which I have control over, right? So if there are some questions that I can't really control, like sending the abstract link or helping you with team changes or things like that, I will skip those questions, okay? So I can only answer those questions that I can help with. Um, there are some questions that I can't answer. I can convey them to the team, but I can't really answer them for you. Okay, so let us go ahead and uh, take some questions now. So whatever questions you have regarding project um, details, please let me know in the chat now. Okay, uh, there are three questions. Let me answer them one by one. The first question is regarding uploading of submission links in the repository. Okay, done, noted. I will connect with the team. I will get all the daily weekly assignment links from them and I will update them on the repository itself. Okay, but I don't think the deadlines are still there. I think most assignments are already done with the deadline. So I don't think you will be able to submit them now, but still, let me check with the team and whichever assignments are still accepting submissions, I will update those links in the repository uh, mostly by tomorrow afternoon-ish. I'll connect with them right away, but it could take up to tomorrow afternoon-ish at best. So yes, that is one thing I will do. I will get the assignment um, details and I will up update them in the repository itself. So you can check the repository out sometime tomorrow for those details. Uh, the second question is about the mentors. So Tejaswini, again, uh, the team is waiting for you to finalize your abstracts. And once all of that is done, then you will be introduced to your mentors. Right now, if we introduce you to your mentors, then it will not matter because you are not starting work on the project just yet. Right. So uh, we are waiting for that to be done. As soon as the formalities are done, I know it's taking a little longer than we initially ex uh, expected. But as soon as the formalities are done and the abstracts are finalized, and as soon as you have an update on that, this is your project and start working on it. The mentors will also be allocated. We already have the mentors with us and I will be connecting with them also. I think tomorrow, mostly uh, tomorrow or day after tomorrow, I have a call with them as well. So I will explain to them everything about the project. I will explain to them what are the requirements and they will be able to assist you accordingly.
right? And also, like I said, just like what we are doing right now, we do have a 15 minute slot at the end of every session that I will keep for answering questions on the project. Okay. Uh, the third thing, let me just check. Yes, a deadline for abstract submission. So as far as I know, the deadline was today, uh, tonight. But again, uh, I will have to confirm this with the team. If for some reason the links were not sent, or if for some reason everybody has not been able to receive links, then we might have to extend it by another day or so. Uh, can you guys let me know in the chat, um, did you receive an updated abstract submission link today? Just a yes or a no. I just want to see if nobody has received it or some people have received it and some people haven't. Just want to check that. Uh, okay, there is a mix bag here. I have yes also and no also in the chat. So that means that the link was sent out, but it did not reach everybody. Um, okay, okay. So yes, the link, um, I am seeing a mixed response. So it, possibly means that uh, not everybody received it, but it was sent out. Uh, okay, sure. Let me check with that. And again, uh, if it has not been received, I will ask the team to resend those links. And, um, you know, uh, so Rahul has said yes. And there are also a couple of uh, private like DM uh, direct messages saying yes to me. Uh, so that's why I'm saying it's a conflict in the chat. But no worries, I will I will um, look into this. So latest by tomorrow, you can expect an update on this as well. And okay, what other questions are there? Okay, what is the next step after submitting the abstract? So Janvi, the next step after you submit the abstract is going to be working on the project document, uh, the project report the first few things, right? So in the first few things, you have to write about the project. Um, you have to write a project description, scope, target audience, all of those things. And then you have to write the system features. So you have to write the requirements, right? Basically feature one, feature two, feature three in detail. So like, um, you know, I have shown you also in the sample, if you see the sample that is uploaded on the repository again, uh, you can find the description system system features. So that is the second step. Once you write those descriptions down, then you can start working on the coding part. Okay. So like I said, two features per person is what I'm looking at. So you should have at least six. If you have three people minimum is the requirement of three people as far as I know. So you should have at least three people in your team, which means at least six features will be there. Okay. So at least six features, for example, must be there. Uh, detail, not just one line, but details, specifications. Okay. That is the setup, right? Uh, done. Okay. Let me move to the next question. Uh, so uh, this is SMG, SMG in the Zoom chat. Uh, your error, that NPM error that you're getting is primarily because you are not in the correct folder. So use the CD command to switch into the correct folder, right? So typically, let me show you, uh, typically we will get this error in this situation when we are, let us say that, um, right? Let us say that we have two folders front end and uh, let's say we have called back end what we created. And then instead of running npm start within front end or back end, you run npm start on the main folder itself. So if I just go ahead and I run npm start, then you can see I get this error, right? So the problem here, and this is the exact same error that you have pasted. The problem here is I am not in the correct folder. So you have to cd into front end or cd into back end where your code is, and then run npm start over there. Okay, that should fix it. So it's just a, a case of you not being in the correct folder. So make sure you switch to the correct folder where your React or Express code is and then try to run the command. It should work fine. Okay. So I hope I have answered that question. Uh, let me go back to the chat.
yes so poshita yes abstract can be there for more than one page no problem but try to keep it um, smaller right so depending on how how over many features you have uh, just keep it small okay and uh, you should be able to figure it out so within maximum one and a half two pages if needed but it should not go beyond that okay usually one page for five to six features it's fine if you can easily fit it into one page if you look at my sample also which i have uploaded in the repository okay you will find it it is also approximately one page itself so if you just look at my sample i have given it to you over here abstract sample so you can see it has uh, four features five features so if you just add three four more features here it will still be a single page okay so you can keep it short and simple you don't need to expand on it much uh, the expansion will happen in the report when you write each individual system feature that is where you will write about these features in detail so the abstract can be actually simple right okay Oh, yes, yes, Rahul, you can definitely do it in two pages. No problem. Try to keep it as, um, you know, simple as possible um, in terms of description. Don't make it very big. Two to three lines, three, four lines per feature is more than enough. Okay, no problem. Um, you can have more pages in abstract. It's not a mandatory one page thing. It can be as big as you want it to be, but keep it simple. Um, I mean, keep it short. Don't elaborate too much on each feature. Just a brief description will work. Okay, uh, done. So I think some of you are also helping each other out. There is one link which is good. Uh, I think this one link I have received from the chat. So this I think is for your team details. I am not sure uh, how it is working, but I think you can see some team details here, member details, etc. Right. So uh, if you want to check that, this I think contains everything, right? All team details. So you can check that out um, from here. I think it's it's a public. Uh, thing right so this is for all teams um yeah i think team titles are also here and there are so many teams as you can probably see that right? we have 1000 uh, teams so that's why it is it is also taking us a little bit of time um you know to actually um, get things done as well uh i am putting this uh, link in the chat as well in case you want this I will also put this in the repository. I don't think it is needed in the repository, but uh, yes, I will. I am putting this in the Zoom chat as well as in the YouTube chat. So you can definitely check that out. Uh, okay, done. Now, um, coming back to the questions on YouTube Live. So let me take this one by one. Uh, so Raju, uh, the MongoDB class is available. Uh, please skip session 20 due to some technical difficulties. Uh, session 20 was not recorded so hence i covered mongodb again uh, in session 21 i have also added another uh, 30 minute long video on mongodb in the repository please refer to that okay so if you see here mongodb reference this is a 30 minute video which i have only much time. okay um let me run this ad quickly do you want it kind of open do you get anxious while talking to other people do you know exactly? Right. So as you can see, this is a MongoDB project video that I have only made. It is about 30 minutes long. And this also explains how to connect the entire MongoDB setup. Okay. And then again, in the repository, um, I have also mentioned that session 20 is missing. Yes, I know. Session 20 is missing. Yes, I know. Due to some technical difficulties, we were not able to record session 20. And obviously we cannot go back and redo that session. So instead, what I have done is I have re-discussed MongoDB in session 21. So if you open session 21 link, then you will see, um, let me show you where it is. Show you how it yes, is. there you go. So here I have re-discussed uh, MongoDB again. See all the way from login, right uh, to sign up creating a cluster and everything i have rediscussed the whole thing the entire process in session 21 so please use this recording instead of session 20 uh, if you're looking for mongodb specifically 
another thing is you can also use this additional reference that i have given to you uh, on mongodb and express that is this video okay so i hope this is more than enough that you need so you should be good okay um okay now uh project work is only soft copy or you have to write in book uh please rajesh no book work it will be soft copy okay you have to submit a pdf or a word document only soft copy no writing on the book no printing pages out okay we will stick to only soft copy unless your college comes up with a very uh specific requirement we don't need a hard copy it will be a soft copy if your college asks for a hard copy requirement then you can print out the project report but whatever you submit to us uh, at blackbuck will be soft copy okay uh, a table of contents should be similar ganeshwari it need not be word to word the same but the major sections should be there right so introduction then system features then design then implementation screenshots testing uh, references that structure should be followed you can change the content inside it but the basic structure should definitely be followed right uh, so rajesh i have answered your question um, please stop posting it again in the chat i have already answered it thank you uh, Uh, tomorrow we don't have a class the class timings will be the same that's monday wednesday friday 6 pm to 7 30 pm is the same setup every day i will just type it down i don't understand uh why even after answering the question uh, it's just putting it again and again i've written it down okay um so again rajesh you have to only submit a soft copy to us which is to blackbuck in case your university requires a hard copy that is a different story you might want to print one out for the university but as far as the submission is concerned for blackbuck it will be only soft copy okay i hope i am clear i hope i've answered this because you pasted it 50 times in the chat okay uh Uh, in the project report, Sandeep, you have to write about the project, right? Obviously, not about FSD, just the project. So again, please, uh, please, you guys, I have read, ref, ref, written it over here that the sample project report is available in this folder. So please go to that folder, open this and access the project report and refer to it. Okay. I have given you the document. So please don't write anything on your own. Please use this as a reference point when you create your project report. Okay. Uh, so yes, you have everything here. It is about 80 pages long. It's more than enough for a reference point. So please make sure that you use that document. Uh, the abstract has to be submitted by everybody from the team, not just the team leader. Every member in the team needs to submit the same document as the abstract. Okay, done. Uh, now, the next thing is, um, I think I will finish it off. Yes. So, the feedback link has already been added to the Zoom chat, um, right? And it will also be added to the YouTube chat soon. Uh, so, please make sure you fill the feedback in, right? And uh, that's it for this one. So, yes, um, you know, I will also check with the team regarding two, three things that you have asked me to. Uh, specifically assignment links as well as the abstract submission deadlines and i will confirm them to you in the next session okay so yes that is it for this one uh, thank you so much guys for attending um yeah i'll see you on wednesday so have a great day let's meet on wednesday and continue from there the topic name is revision session one right that's the uh topic name for today's session so let me just show that to you as well here you go this is the topic name Okay, uh, revision session one, this one. Okay, this is the topic name for today. And yeah, that's basically it. Make sure you fill the feedback before you leave. Uh, thank you so much for attending. And uh, yeah, let's discuss later on. And again, uh, in the next session also, we will keep the last 15, 20 minutes for doubts. Um, just we have, uh, just like what we have today. Okay, so that's uh, that's the idea.
right now thing in the youtube channel as well so yes um, that's it for this one uh, make sure to fill the feedback in and yeah see you guys on wednesday goodbye